Well, the actual length of the rope and the frequency of the wave are what determines the resonant wave that stands on there. Now, what are we up to? Yeah, the lowest, the lowest frequency one is called, is called the jump rope wave. Ah, uh, yes. Now, Dave, now, this is another one where this, this is a little different, but not much. Uh, but the main thing is it requires the, the frequency that you have to hit to precisely have the right standing wave is very, very precise. And that's why Dave does this one too. Okay, what we have here is a tube with a speaker at one side, all right, it has a lot of holes along the top, and it has a gas source, as you can tell, right, it's like a barbecue, come all the way up. Um, sure, you can do that. And um, we have the set already pretty much at the right frequency, but let me ask before we get to, to that, uh, what size is usually a sound wave, like frequency of about 1,000 hertz, 400 hertz, something like that, how big is that, do you think? Big. Pretty big, right? You think it's pretty big, right? So we'll see. Okay, has any of you here ever seen sound? You ever seen it? No. We're going to see it right now. And if one of these waves travel on, my sound, as it's coming to you, what does that travel on? Air. Air, right? Air waves need a medium to travel along, unless, of course, you're light. Right? That's, that doesn't need a medium. But air, but sound needs a medium. So what we have here is all this plane. And let's see if we can hear the wave and see it at the same time. And here you can see it. So those waves as they're traveling through the air towards you are the very same size. Okay, so now you've seen sound. Now think about this. Here's my next question. If you go ahead and you would make that frequency higher, forget the let's say 500 hertz, are the waveforms larger or smaller? Smaller. Anybody think larger? No, because bass notes are usually a little bit larger, right? So let's see what we can actually see. You can see that's nice stabilizing white right now, so we're going to bring it up to 500. You can hear the pitch increase, get higher in pitch, higher in tone. Let's go ahead and turn it pop right up. Remember, too, it's only going to have specific spots where you actually can see the waveforms. And there's the next one. There's 500 hertz. You can see that's now a smaller waveform. You can hear it higher in pitch. Want to do another one? Yeah. yeah, why not? Usually don't do too many, but let's see if we can get a real high one. when it enters the material. When it goes like this, that's because I'm going in through the side, 
Sometimes you can even get it to stay totally inside the material. They call this total internal reflection. And that means it comes up here, reflects off the top, and you see nothing comes out the top, and it all stays inside. Actually, the, the recently the Nobel Prize was given for this, for uh, optical fibers, for operates on this principle. Now, Dave is going to do a little demonstration on yeah. this, in which he is going well, to show you an, an example where the speed of changes and it makes things visible or not visible. So right here we have two beakers right on camera, okay? You can see them both. There's a middle beaker, a little smaller than this bigger beaker right here. You can both see them on camera, right? Okay, the room's pretty clear. Why can you see this middle beaker? Well, as the light passes through it, it bends the light, reflects a little light, you can come back, comes back, and you can see it. Okay, because you see how the light changes. This is uh, magic food, no, 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 it's just oil. And you can actually do the same, very, very same thing with baby oil too if you want to. This is just vegetable oil. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this fluid, I'm going to pour it in here. Now remember that this uh, glass, the Pyrex, actually bends the light at a certain rate because of its density. So what I'm doing now is I'm adding this Wesson oil, which just ha happens to have exactly the same density as the Pyrex. So if I have it in the middle, you can still see that middle beaker, right? Okay, good. But now let's surround that middle beaker. Let's actually take this oil and pour it all the way around it. <laughs> Notice now that, now that the light no longer bends or reflects as it passes through the oil and then the beaker, there's no longer any way for you to see it. Is it still there? Yes. No, right? <laughs> No, it's really still there, and you just can't see it anymore because the density is exactly the same as our Western oil. Therefore, the light never bends when it's passing through all that stuff. Okay? So if you really want to trick your parents, you put a couple glasses in the thing, pour oil in there, and they're like, oh, what's this? Just the glass didn't go in there. Oh, no. <laughs> There's a piece of very expensive Rutgers equipment. <laughs> the garbage can, it's got a hole in it, it's got a piece of rubber on the other side. And there's things you can do with this. You can actually blow some hair out of the side. Now, not everybody can see what I'm doing, right? right? Now remember, what science is really all about in a lot of ways is actually trying to figure out what's going on. They look at different situations, they look at what's going on in nature, and they say, well, what's really happening? And you can do that a couple different ways. You can look closer at it, or you can actually see how it affects other things. So what's that? It's just a candle that's a little away from me. If I go ahead and I do that, I can blow the candle out. So I know it has an effect. That's important. But we want to do more than that. And scientists, all, ty all types of scientists use all different ways to look at things. Biologists use microscopes, all different types of devices. Astronomers use the telescopes, all different wavelengths of light. So what I'm going to use here is theatrical fog. So let's actually take a look at what we have going on there with that air. Because there's really no way to see it without something called a streamer, which is what the theatrical fog is. 